Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the D2 Talks. Every week on this channel we feature talks with some of the best artists from the archivist industry. So if you're new here, please do consider subscribing. This week on the show I have the pleasure to have Stefan Vittori of Tangram 3DS, a US based company that has been around for about 15 years. Stefan himself is a pioneer in the field, he comes from Austria, I used to live in Austria so there is kind of like a connection there. He's been a supporter of the D2 conference since day one. He was a sponsor and a speaker at the event, so I'm very excited to have him on the show. Okay, enough of me, blah blah blah. Enjoy this video. One, and we're recording. Hi, Stefan. Hi, hey, how are you? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I uh, every time that I talk to you, I call you Stefan because this is how you pronounce it in Austria. But yeah. I guess people call you Stefan. Yeah, in America they do. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> I am very happy to have Stefan Vittori of Tangram 3DS. Stefan, uh, you and I have a very special relationship, at least I like to think because you were one of the very first sponsors to help us with the D2 conference in the beginning. We have also a very special relationship because you're Austrian and, you know, I am in love with Austria. I lived there for, um, I don't know, almost 10 years. And when you saw that we were doing the event in Vienna, you got very excited because at your time, when you started doing this, there wasn't nothing like uh, like that, right? Right, that's right, yes. Give us a little bit of a background, who you are and what you do and how you started. Well, um, I came to the United States in 1999. And uh, actually I started with 3D Studio Max in, it was actually 3D Studio those in, 1990 and uh, there was actually I think AutoCAD 6 out there that had a couple of advanced modeling tools and some booleans but that was it and then I discovered 3D, uh, 3D Studio DOS and uh, yeah and got into it but as you said there were no user groups there were no the manuals out there it was really really, really at the basic of um, 3D modeling and architectural visualization. The professional architectural vis visualization didn't ever exist at that time. So uh, when I got started, it was mostly self-taught, you know, reading up, try and error all the time. <laughs> and so, yeah, but I moved on and and uh, got pretty good at that, and I really like that. That's that's the whole thing. I got a, I have a passion for that. So I started teaching at Wi-Fi in Vienna because uh, I did some courses and and trained people. Uh, and then I, when 3D Studio Max came out, I think it was the second version. I went to New York for a, a master class in 3D Studio Max. And that changed uh, changed a lot, uh, and I got more professional in doing 3D modeling and, and, and visualization. Uh, it was really quite interesting because the profession didn't exist, so the training was about character modeling and character animation. Uh, and it was with Michel Bousquet. Michel Bousquet was a, is a real a long time uh, a character animator and wrote, wrote a lot of books. And at that time, it was really a, a, a really great course in New York City. And I was there for two weeks and then got back to Vienna. At that time, I worked uh, an, as an in-house 3D modeler. They didn't even know how to describe the position. They said, they always said, the 3D guru, the 3D guy, <laughs> put me in the darkest corner of the room because they thought I need, I don't need any daylight. You know, we guys, we just needed dark. It was it was quite interesting. Uh, and um, after that, in I which office? Use... In which office did you work? It was uh, in it was uh, outside of Vienna and Wiener Neudorf. It, it was a small office. It's called Architect Hermann Schmidt, and uh, he's still he's still in Mödling in Vienna. He still has his office there. Uh, and he was very progressive. It was great because he hired me. Actually, he gave me 
It was 1996 when he gave me the position as 3D director of 3D graphics. So we tried to start an in-house group. Actually, I was the CAD manager at the time there too. And he, he, was, he was great. He was supporting it a lot. And he also supported because Austria joined the EU at that time. And so small businesses in Austria got some subvention for employees for training. And if you can prove and make a case that there is no training in Austria, you could go somewhere in the world, anywhere in the world. So I made that case that because there was no training anywhere in Europe or in Vienna about 3D, uh, uh, 3D Studio Max or becoming a 3D Studio Max masterclass. So I, I applied for it and we got it approved by the EU. I still had to pay half of it by myself, <laughs> but it was worth it. Uh, so yeah, and then after that, position I I left for the US uh, family reasons and uh, yeah we wanted to start in the US and I applied on online for jobs as um, building up 3D in-house groups and I got a couple of offers in the Boston area at that time in the US actually they were just transitioning from hand drafting to CAD drafting so I was pretty far advanced and I uh, got nice job offers and the one job of I really liked this because we liked the the, the, the town very much is Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's right on the ocean, and I I, I have accepted that offer. And uh, it was the position of director of 3D graphics, and it was a really cool, progressive architecture firm that grew uh, to 120 people. They had offices in Washington D.C., Jacksonville, Florida, and Atlanta. Uh, Georgia. And so I started there in the first three months or actually the first two years living in Portsmouth was like vacation for me because as you know we don't have the sea and the yeah. water. <laughs> so uh, it was it was really nice. Uh, the morning drive to the office it's just beautiful. So I fell in love with the area and, and living here was really uh, great. Uh, it is great. Uh, so when I joined the, the architecture firm, which uh, the name is GSA Architects in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, they hired a lot of uh, people with new skills. And when I joined them, they really were like, they were applauded me when I came and because <laughs> I was contributing a lot to the company. The Wunderkind <laughs> from Austria. <laughs> the Schwarzenegger of 3D. <laughs> So it was it was a great great office environment. There a lot of support. Um, some people were jealous because I had the fastest machine. They got all new hardware and software for me when I started, and and the best machine was a 500 megahertz computer. <laughs> Still needed half an hour to load a scene. So it was it was. But at that time it was really cool. Uh, and then I I. So I never stopped learning. For me, it was clear I had to keep on going. I wanted to be on the top of everything. And and so I um, at that time, Lightscape came out. And that was a, oh, the, the first ray tracing program that really you could watch the, the radiosity and the radiosity program uh, on the screen in real time. So I really loved this program. And then I went to Montreal for some training. Back then, Lightscape, I think, was part of Discrete, as it was a big company in uh, multimedia software that got bought by Autodesk later on. But I went to training there for um, for a week on Lightscape, which actually died later on. <laughs> it got bought, so it's not existing anymore. But um, I loved the program, and then uh, so I started working as an in-house 3D modeler, visualizer, uh, and we start, my first project was a Marriott Hotel in Quincy, Massachusetts. And at that time, I really modeled in, still, because I came from AutoCAD, I still modeled things in AutoCAD and then imported it into 3D Studio Max. Um, and, of course, there was, I think, the first... Uh, render engines were like final renders, Brazil and, mm -hmm. and 
And there was a German company, I think Saber Studio, Saber Studio was, I think they brought a final render and I used that a lot and, and I really got, got, got some good results. But then uh, V-Ray came out and uh, changed the whole, the whole profession, I think. Yeah, so that, that, was, was, that was a very big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, uh, yeah, and I produced some really nice work, but there was always a, a, a holdback because, as you know, in architecture studios, when times get tough and the economy isn't that great, the investment isn't there. And 3D was kind of the icing of the cake. So they couldn't, they didn't invest into, you know, getting better hardware or, you know, training and things like mm -hmm. that. And uh, for me, that wasn't enough. Uh, also, we uh, really, I mean, the project I worked on at that time was uh, a, a, a life science park in Beijing, China, because the architecture firm won this competition in China and Beijing. And it was uh, actually the two architects, the designers, they were in the Atlanta office uh, and they were, they were teaching architecture at the university in Atlanta. And they were the main designers and they used MicroCAD for their 3D modeling. So it was really interesting to model uh, an organic shape like Frank Gehry kind of design mm -hmm. in AutoCAD. That was a challenge for me, <laughs> but, but I, I could do it uh, successfully and I got some nice renderings at, for that time. And so the project was very successful. But then I moved on, I uh, just, uh, the economy was kind of getting slower here in the US and I got an offer from an, uh, a big branding company. And the, at that time, there were like 150 people, they had offices in New York and it was a public company, they were in the stock market and they had like interior designers, architects, industrial designers, and they were the number one uh, design company for bank interiors, merchandising, fixtures, and things like that. So I, I got the, I took the job on as the team leader of 3D visualization, which was a challenge because I had to integrate uh, interior designers, graphic designers, in, industrial designers, and basically make the whole. 3D department efficient the workflow and you can imagine how difficult it was because it was everyone was there, had a different workflow at that time there was no streamline and user group started at that time I think uh, actually I, I was good friend at that time then with Ted Boardman he was kind of mm -hmm. uh, old guru at, in that profession and it turned out Ted lives in Portsmouth New Hampshire oh really so Yes, I met him at the uh, Autodesk University in Boston back then. Uh, I was in his class, and then I went out for coffee, and, and this guy came to me looking like Santa Claus, <laughs> CC Top, and, and started speaking with me in German. and said, wow, this is cool. So it turns out that Ted lived uh, like six years in, in Austria, Germany. And so we became friends, and it turned out that Ted actually, I talked with Ted since my time in Austria. I didn't know who he is, but uh. he was the first of a user group and supporter. And then He's a legend, out. the guy. He's been, yeah. he's been you know. <laughs> yeah. So that was great. And so I had basically, we, I met on a regular basis with Ted just to talk about, you know, 3, um, 3D um, modeling, architectural visualization. He wrote many books and he was very helpful. He was a real mentor to me when it came to architectural visualization and, and uh, especially texturing materials, lighting and, and, and um, so he was kind of my first a real tutor or a trainer at the time. Um, yeah, so back then at the uh, design company for banking and, and the financial industry, that was a challenge uh, to lead, I think it was like 20 people at that time to group together and make it make it work. And um, at, yeah, again, the economy went down, the, the company didn't do so well, and I said, that's not going anywhere, 
and this is a this is a separate industry and a separate business. I need to start my own company, and that's when I I actually was flying to Austria for on vacation and started writing my business plan. I had a clear idea of what I wanted and I, I did everything per book, you know, writing a business plan um, and financial plan and everything and I had it all worked out. The idea was to make a profit center for my current company mm -hmm. and thank God they didn't accept that offer because they went down the drain after a year <laughs> later and I started my own company <laughs> without them. But it was it was a challenge. But what had happened and what, what was possible is because of my passion for it and, and my love for, for architectural visualization. I didn't care. I mean, I knew there, there, there was no money really in there, but the, the time was, was really cool. It was, it, it was very open. It was a, a new new tool that when I started my business, so in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and um, the, the local architects and the local um, design community, they really jumped on the opportunity that I was there. And I was, it was just me and um, a student, uh, in, an intern and I had at the other company who actually still went to college and helped me modeling from his dorm room in, in, at college. Really? Uh, but it's yeah. not uh, it's not Jared, is it? No, no. Jared came later. Jared okay. uh, Jared is with me now ten years, and he was also a student, first year in college. And uh, actually, I have to tell you, um, I look forward in the future if I'm gonna have the chance to interview Jared because it would be nice also to to hear his perspective. Also, because I know. <laughs> that is very busy on other stuff that you guys are working on. But yeah. I don't want to give any of that away. We can talk about it maybe yes. later. Yeah, no. It, yeah, Jared, the story with Jared is great because he's t 10 years with me and he was my intern. He was the intern for Tangram from day one on when he started his college. And he worked his way up to be the How, how many people are you at the moment in the office? We're a small group, uh, 12 people, uh, 10 people in the office, uh, two people in, uh, we started the Columbus branch, there are two people there in Columbus, Ohio, and we work, we have two good friends in Poland, in near Warsaw. Yes, uh, they also yeah. came to the D2 conference. Right, right, they are great, Claudius and Monica, they mm. got married while... Uh, they got engaged while working with Ting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was at a wedding in Poland, which was really nice. Uh, they're good friends, and uh, we love them. Um, yeah, so... I, I want to uh, ask you, I want to ask you, what were the biggest challenges of you starting your firm? You know, because from what I understand, you have learned a lot because you were exposed to so many different challenges. And I think this is great because... I kind of fear a little bit that nowadays this doesn't happen anymore because, you know, design has become a much more holistic uh, discipline. Uh, but in your case, you know, you got enriched with all this, uh, you know, knowledge and then you decided to start your company. So what were the difficulties for you? Well, the, 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 the difficult was the having the capital to start a real business. Because uh, I didn't have when uh, we we moved to the states, there's there's no credit for for the bank, so the the, the financial background isn't there. So I didn't get any uh, line of credit or uh, financial support from, from any official uh, uh, source. But um, that was that was a challenge. But I, again, I, I really was so pa passionate about it. I, I got, my wife supported me in everything I did. And it wasn't easy because we had, we have two sons. At that time, they were, were just starting with school. So quitting my full-time job with a nice paycheck was this very, it's very uh, a difficult decision. But I have a beautiful, great, loving wife, and she supported me. She said, I, I lent you the money, and she did. And um, I started uh, leasing hardware, and I got the money together to start it. And, and I, it was clear for me it should be a real business. 
uh, and so that was the that was the first challenge. And uh, but soon I got enough projects in. It was all word uh, uh, word of mouth, and um, so the local community supported me right away. So I got enough work in. It was almost too too much work for me at the beginning. Uh, the next challenge was to deal with clients, uh, really hardcore business people, because we, as you know, we work for the real estate industry. And at that time, in the Boston real estate guys, so we, we expanded, I expanded, I hired my first employees, and then we get into the Boston market with the real estate uh, market and, and having meetings with uh, guys, with suits and ties and mm. hardcore business people was <laughs> how do I how do I talk with them? How do I you know explain that our services have a dollar value? You know it's and then at that time it was really a lot of educating clients. Clients didn't understand the process. Even nowadays, I mean it's much better, but even nowadays you still the first thing I had to do is actually all the time just explain and educate clients how this works because they had no idea what what's involved in them they just saw the dollar value or the, the price and said whoa this is very expensive but said, well once they under, understood the, the workflow and what's going in there it, it was kind of um, easier but that was a challenge and i remember when i started the office i i had only the tabletop i had saw horses under my table and I knew that the, the, the architect and the developers are coming for a meeting. It was one of my first meetings in the in the new office. And but I wasn't prepared that there are five guys showing up in suits and ties and coming up into my office and I, I don't even have a real table. So but it was it was cool <laughs> at the end. They they turned out they became one of our best clients. We had like four or five big job projects with them and they stayed with us. But at the beginning, they were really hardcore. It was like, you know, there's clients, for instance, uh, who also became one of our best clients, developer, who comes into the office, I'm ready, prepared everything, have the presentations ready, and I thought I did really nice work, you know, getting more realistic. And the guy walks in and said, hey, what's this? I've seen better work than this. <laughs> that was the first time. I said, so I said, no, thanks. <laughs> but it turned out a good relationship. So clients start understanding more nowadays. They are very well educated about what the process is, the costs, everything. And so it's, it's much I, easier. I, I can tell you one thing, and hopefully, you know, this can help also the people watching from home. I sat down in a room in Vienna with um, a lot of clients that were getting training from uh, a trainer which i don't want to say the name because you know it's uh, they're gonna hate him uh where they basically discussed you know which ones are the techniques that you can use to get what you want from mm -hmm. people that you hire and i have seen better work it's one of the first phrases that you say you know uh another one is yeah, but you know that this is not the uh, the market price, you know, mm -hmm. so the, they automatically try to push you down. And these people are trained to talk uh, to, to artists and to, you know, accountants and lawyers yeah. and that way. The best way to react to that is to ignore it. <laughs> and just continue doing your thing. I'm sorry, I felt like it was necessary to say that because, you know, mm -hmm. I know your work and I know your dedication and for sure, you know, what people told you wasn't about the fact that your work wasn't good. It was just that, you know, they were oh, yeah. pulling the, the, the tie right. on you. <laughs> you want to be, they want to be in charge and they want to tell you how things work and go. <laughs> They're paying for it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Anyway, and let me let me ask you a little bit. So, uh, you know, basically you guys have started doing images, which I think for a very long time were kind of like the standard production. But now, you know, I follow you, I follow the page of uh, Tangram, I follow uh, Jared also. 
I know that you guys are like growing also from a technological point of view. I see you experimenting also a little bit with like uh, uh, VR. Um, mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, yeah. what the things that are coming next? Yes. Well, the uh, the big change was the the downturn in the economy in the uh, middle of 2008, and we were really struggling in the U.S. here between 2008 and 2014, I would say. Uh, and the um, before it was was fine. We were started as a 3D visualization studio, just doing 3D renderings. Did then some animation work and then got an, a motion graphic design and video artist so we could do better videos. But the profession changed dramatically after after the economic dawn, the, the, the uh, recession. And so it was clear if if we want to and we want to survive, we have to add more services. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time we got also requests from clients, hey, can you do a website? Can you do some branding work? Can you help us with advertising work? So I expanded the services and uh, hired a, a, a director of in- interactive design. We actually got requests for, for starting with iPad applications, augmented reality, and it was all new, of course. Of course, you say you can do it because at the same time you do the research and development. Yeah, you know, exactly. As much as you can do, because you have to still do the day in and day out work to earn the bread, and and there's not much time on the side to do the research and development for a small studio like us. We don't have a dedicated research team, but one of my business models and and, and goals has always been we have to be. You have to be on top and you never stop learning as a 3D artist. Always look what's new out there and learn new things. Um, and so we did. We moved forward. We we hired our talents to help with the interactive design. We started uh, designing websites and uh, branding. And then we got into the augmented, um, tried all kinds of different software packages. Turns out, Chuck uh, Benner in, in in our office. He's a senior artist. Um, he has a long experience in uh, VR, so he's kind of our VR specialist. And uh, so he looked into more uh, augmented uh, and the augmented reality uh, field and the VR field. And so now, today, we actually like so many other studios and artists. We uh, we're using the Unreal Engine for VR and real-time VR. Uh, we actually get requests now. It was still, it's still not there that you know clients want to really pay for, for the services. But we do get requests. Uh, we are doing 360 panels for um, with VR, uh, V-Ray for for quite some maybe two years now. Uh, UE is um, is new. But we got some requests lately, and, uh, and this is definitely the, the, the future. And with making V-Ray making it so easy to um, and uh, to integrate uh, 3D Studio Max scenes into 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 uh, the UE game engine, it's it's just it's it's actually the cost too. It's it's it's, it's almost cheaper to do that than to produce a 3D animation walkthrough. Which the walkthroughs and animations are kind of stale, anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> so well, you know, so, there is always like a market. Uh, I think that there will always be a market for everything, in a way, you know, because the the images will always uh, serve their own purpose. Uh, augmented reality or immersive architecture, that kind of stuff, virtual reality is taking you know uh, it's quickly becoming the new standard so we're gonna see that taking the place of a lot of uh, other things uh, but now listening to you talking you know kind of like uh, with this wise attitude towards the business i'm curious to ask you if you could go back like say 10 years mm-hmm. what would you do different 15 15 years after 15 the years, 15 okay. years in <laughs> business now. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a good question. I don't know what I would do different. I I think I would I would 
take on partners, partners in the business. The hard thing for is if you're all alone as a business owner and you grow, it's much easier if you're partners. I mean, we're good friends with Neoscape and they were always three partners. They started, uh, the three partners started Neoscape and, and it, they, they, you can divide the uh, responsibility and the, and the, the tasks for the, for the business. Uh, for me, it was it was hard because my family kind of life suffered under that, and uh, so it was long nights and you know constantly working everywhere you go. So I think if I had, if I would start again, take on partners and as a group, it's much easier to talk about things and you know get the energy and you know it's 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 great. Um, that that. Definitely, I would change that. Other than that, I mean, I had it, I had it much easier, I guess, starting the business back then than, than you guys or than, than guys now or people nowadays because it's so much competition out there. Everything changed. Um, people, yeah, I, we 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 were kind of, you know, at the beginning of things when we talked. We we talked about. I mean, V-Ray was like, it was a trial and error all the time. So when we talked, it was like, basically we were like the guinea pigs for, for V-Ray or 3D Studio Max because our complaints went into the departments uh, and the programmers and <laughs> they, they could work on the software. So it was kind of an interactive uh, uh, conversations yeah. and all about um, um, uh, 3D architecture visualization. Today, is, I think it's it's really harder to start a business like that. It's. I think it's very saturated, and uh, you know, very often what the mistake is, is that people go into this business, saying, you know, things like I do architectural visualization renderings. So in a way, it's a little bit like. Um, it's a little bit like putting a lot of limits on yourself, you know, because you're like, uh, you know, you're like in a pizzeria and you say, I do pizzas and that's it. There is nothing more than you can do. So yeah. you are a little bit taking orders from your client, you know, and yeah. you cannot consult, you cannot support your client with his real needs because a client might come to you and say, I need an image, but basically what he needs is a website or is a more uh, holistic solution, you know? Now, just because I'm saying this, um, if you were to like mentor somebody a little bit younger that wants mm -hmm. to go into this business, somebody mm -hmm. slightly younger than you, say 25 years old, <laughs> what, what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell that person? Well, I I am a, I'm a lucky person, and it only took me 15 years to build up the dream team I have now in my office, and they all uh, they all in their 20s and early 30s. So, <laughs> but and I uh, we talk a lot about um, you know. What I would say, what I say to to my guys and, and and someone who wants in, and the first thing is you have to have the passion for what you do. Don't do it because of the money. There is no money in there, really. The as the business side of architecture visualization was always not great, and it's just there's no earnings in that. So if you do it for the money, that's the wrong profession to do it. Keep your passion, uh, your interest on on in art in any way in in all kinds of art, you know, because it's overlapping our field. It's photography, it's in it, filmmaking, uh, design. So just keep that. But w if you really want to start your business, surround yourself with with uh, experienced business people. Ask them all the questions. There's great organizations here in the U.S. that help you to start a business, but mostly, just you know, do it. Do it out of of um, there's still still enough time to do it out of passion, and everything else will fall in place. As you, I mean, I can tell it from my experience. It uh, just comes along because if you do good work, and clients, that that's one thing when you go into meetings with clients. I could always ex 
they could always feel the passion of what I'm doing in the meetings. So it wasn't about, you know, the money or the cost or whatever. It's, it's, I, got, I get really carried away when to tell the story. Of, let's, let's say they have a cool project and, and I saw the animation or the, 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 the film already and I, I, they, they can feel it. And I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I'm passionate about my office, my, my business, about the people. I, I care about the people I work with. And that's, that's, that's the most important thing. You can get financial help nowadays. It's much easier to get loans or line of credits, and uh, it's it's so the financial part comes by itself. Mm. So, but it's not a. I always tell my guys it's not, when or when I interview people to uh, when we hire, it's not a paycheck job. That that then you need to go somewhere else. Mm. You're not gonna earn the big money here, and some some guys. People are really uh, surprised about it because they think it's the big money in the industry, which is not. <laughs> so. I guess it's a uh, you know the it's a little bit like a, an old school way to look at this because I think that very often people are lied to a little bit also when you know going to university. Very often you go to university because they promise you better uh, job. Um, opportunities at the end but the mm -hmm. truth is that you know in, in especially in things that you know are driven by the sorry not driven but like you know arty things like you know uh, paint movie making you have to do it first to satisfy your own persona and then mm -hmm. if you're good enough some money will follow Obviously, you, that's not what we want for our people because we want people to be able to work and live their own life. But, mm -hmm. uh, of course, it shows the attitude towards the, the, this, the, the job, you know. It shows having discipline. It shows having a goal in mind which goes beyond the, the monetary value because the monetary value, yes, of course, it is important. But if you start hanging yourself on that, you will never get anything done, you know. Yeah. There are there are sometimes uh, times that you have to sacrifice the monetary aspect uh, in order for to to have a better project. Now, with that said, again, we're not saying to people that they should work for free, but people should understand what the real value is. If it's a project that doesn't have a monetary value and it has only like a uh, intellectual value, you have to understand that. If it's a project where somebody doesn't care about the intellectual value but just wants to make money with, then probably you are allowed to ask for more money. You know, there is not that much importance. I don't know. I try always, you know, to cover both sides of the uh, uh, of this aspect because I don't want people to go away and think, okay, then I should work for no money at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, now the what well, you asked me before the challenges of you know what what we are doing is uh, it's coming up with the costs for what we are doing. That was a challenge too, and it is a challenge for um, for every new person starting a business. Is you don't you don't want to undersell yourself or you don't want to be too expensive either, but you also don't want to have just the clients dictate you what 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 you should charge on it. So yeah. this is kind of uh, that that took quite some time for me and for the business to you know make this balance mm -hmm. because this balance between quality of work, speed, and pricing, and that's I think we we got a good grip and I got a good grip on that. And with Jared leading the production, we have a really good he. He helped really streamlining, uh, streamlining the workflow, and we, we make it made it really profitable. The, the the workflow and and how we we work in the office as a team and with our clients. Uh, that's a that's a challenge. So if you start your own business, <laughs> you don't. Uh, it's really it's really hard when clients just you know. Don't respect that and, and don't want to pay anything for it. <laughs> clients gonna client. That's uh, that's how they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stefan, listen, we are already for uh, almost 40 minutes in. I know that you're a very busy person. I would say 
this <laughs> was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I don't want to keep you because I'm pretty Thank sure you. you're very busy. Uh, I really appreciate your time and I really hope that, you know, your story is going to inspire others to go out yeah. there and do their own thing. Thank you, Fabio. I'll see you at the D2. Right? Hopefully, hopefully. Please come and see us. Oh, you have you have to. You will be there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I have to. I'm kind of forced. <laughs> Stefan, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop the recording. Don't go anywhere so that I can say goodbye. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot for doing this.